Uh, so today we're talking about buckling restrained braced frames. Uh, there's a lot of material uh, that I'd like to cover. I'd like to make sure that everyone understands the principles involved in designing buckling restrained braces, uh, braced frames for ductile behavior, uh, to understand the practical considerations in designing buckling restrained braced frames, and to, uh, go, uh, to be familiar with the appropriate applications for this type of system. So we'll talk about some applications. We'll talk about uh, ductile design of steel structures in general. Uh, then we'll talk about the braces themselves and how they function, the design of buckling restrained braced frames, some issues with specification and coordination, some very new issues related to connections. Uh, these aren't necessarily specific to buckling restrained braced frames, but the buckling restrained braces tend to be much stronger or can be much stronger than a lot of uh, traditional braces that people are used to working with and so that leads to special uh, special issues uh, around connections. And then we'll talk about some special uses and some uh, ideas for uh, nonlinear analysis using buckling restrained braced frames. All right, so applications. Uh, you may have seen buildings like this around uh, with the uh, with the special braces, uh, buckling restrained braces have been used quite a lit, quite a bit in low-rise uh, buildings. Uh, used also extensively in high-rise, especially high-rise office buildings, and as outriggers in uh, in some taller buildings, both steel-framed and uh, with concrete shear walls. And they've even been used in retrofit applications, uh, even though they are not necessarily as stiff as uh, conventional braced frames, they still provide a lot of energy dissipation and that can be extremely beneficial in a retrofit application. Uh, generally, buckling, buckling restrained braced frames are considered as an alternative to special concentrically braced frames, so usually when we are uh, thinking a bit about uh, seismic response, a uh, special concentrically braced frame is a, is a common system. Buckling restrained braced frame provides a good alternative because of the uh, ductility of the braces. And from a design efficiency point of view, the R factor is greater, uh, R factor of 8 for the buckling restrained braced frame as opposed to 6 for the special concentrically braced frame. And a longer period, which is reflected in the approximate period formula in ASE 7, section 12.8. There's also generally a reduced connection expense, at least uh, a pound per pound of, uh, of resistance. Uh, the buckling restrained braced frame delivers less overstrength to the connection and therefore the connection can be more efficient. Uh, buckling restrained braced frames can also be considered as an alternative, an efficient alternative to the R equals 3 concentrically braced frame system that is sometimes used in seismic design categories B and C. So as we'll see in the next couple of graphs, uh, here is a diagram uh, of a number of uh, um, say, uh, base shear e equations put together. Um, so the lowest diagram is the buckling restrained braced frame with an R of 8. Uh, the middle diagram there is the SCBF with an R of 6. So the R factor reduces the, uh, reduces the design forces for both the plateau and the period dependent parts of the spectrum. And then you can see the C sub X from ASE 7, that's the approximate period coefficient. Uh, for the SCBF, it's 0 0.02, and it's 50% larger for the BRBF, 0 0.03, meaning the, uh, the period, at least in the approximate analysis or in the, in the approximation, is 50% larger. So if you put these two things together and you're in this region of the spectrum, you're essentially cutting your design base shear in about half. That's, uh, that's very beneficial uh, for the efficiency of the structure. Comparing to the R equals 3, obviously 8 is a lot greater than 3, and so the reduction is uh, significantly greater. And we also have that period elongation going on as well, so that, uh, that represents a more dramatic drop in the base year. So if you're designing a building, say, somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, Las Vegas, Nevada, where, and you're in seismic design category C, you might consider R equals 3, but you might also consider the advantages of the buckling restrained braced frame with the R equals 8 and the longer period, uh, reducing uh, forces on foundations and so on. So uh, the braces themselves, 
are more expensive. They're, uh, as we'll see when we, uh, when we get into that segment, uh, they have a number of components that are assembled together. It's not just a rolled piece of steel. However, uh, if you use a buckling or strain braced frame, the design forces on columns and beams and foundations can be significantly less. So if you're doing a cost comparison, you should consider uh, these, re uh, these reductions uh, as well as the more expensive braces. Also, the braces can be uh, stronger than uh, traditional steel braces, uh, and uh, that can mean that you have greater plan flexibility. You can concentrate the resistance in fewer locations. That might have an effect on the redundancy factor of your structure, something to be considered, but it, uh, it does provide greater plan efficiency. 